Welcome, dear friends, to The Great Mead Project with three ingredients, the primary subject. With many great YouTubers who have come here to share how to make mead with their own special flair. BC, the idea man at doing the most. With man-made mead, a wonderful host. Faywood Mead, check out her channel below. And Mead with Eric and Derek always puts on a good show. Charles can help you with inebriation. <laughs> Follow my friend at DIY Fermentation. And Arrow to the Mead has a really cool theme, like Rag and Bone Meadery, as well it does seem. And Carlos at Texas Longhouse Mead, if taking up brewing, he can help you succeed. Method to Meadness can teach you to brew. Check him out as he walks you through. All of these YouTubers linked in the description below. Now to get started, on with the show. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for coming out and hanging with Hodge. That's me. Come for the mead. Stay for the great mead project. So uh, I'm excited about the project. Let's go ahead and look to see what are we going to be using. So today we have, obviously, I've got uh, yeast and I've got that rehydrating right now. So you can go ahead and just pitch yeast straight in. Uh, the instructions that we're using on the Lalvin EC1118 does say to rehydrate. You can pitch it straight in. I've always rehydrated it, so we'll keep with that. Uh, we have a graduated cylinder, made it through college. We have a hydrometer that will let us know what our starting gravity is on our mead. We have our brew bucket that we'll be using. Our nutrients that we'll be using will be dimonium phosphate. We have our turkey baster or our wine thief. That's going to allow us to uh, fill up our uh, graduated cylinder to be able to take the measurements that we need. We have an airlock that's filled to the max line here with star sand water. So we use star sand water because regular water will evaporate quickly. Uh, or it may evaporate quickly, but it will, can also allow other bugs to get through. The star sand makes sure that it kills it off before it can get, make it into the bucket here. We have a uh, mesh uh, bag here that we'll be using. This has already been sanitized as well. By the way, everything here has been sanitized. Make sure that you do sanitize everything before you start working with it. We have, over here in this bucket here, we have a bucket of hot water with our honey that we'll be using. We're using wildflower honey from Costco. I like the, if I can't get local honey, uh, I like to use the Costco honey uh, because it's really, it's for five pounds, it's 11 bucks. It used to be 10 bucks. It's gone up a little bit, uh, but it's still uh, not expensive and uh, it works really well. I've been using it for years. I really like it. Now, let's look at our ingredients. So as you saw, uh, if you watched the video over on doing the most, uh, I am teaming up. I get to team up with a great host of other YouTube mead brewers. And we have agreed on a set of ingredients. So let's go ahead and take a look at our ingredients now. Our first ingredient we said that we were going to be using was mango. So as you've seen in my other videos, uh, what I like to use for mango, mango nectar that I get from uh, this is organic mango nectar. I get that from Costco as well. So we're going to be using, starting off with mango nectar. Then we are just going to dump it into our brew bucket. And we're going to let it chug in. I want to get as much oxygen in there as possible. All right. The next ingredient that we had agreed upon was a pepper. So... We have a jalapeno pepper, thus the knife. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut the top off. I just don't want the stem in there. And just cut it right down the middle. That's all we're gonna do there. And then we're gonna go ahead and put that into our bag here. The 
This is going to make cleanup a lot easier. Set that aside right here for a second. Move this out of the way. Let's go ahead and add our honey now first. I'm going to hold off on our last ingredient. We've got about four pounds of wild flower honey here. I'm just going to go ahead and pour that in. By putting it into the hot water, it allows it to pour much smoother. There we go. And then, we have some mangoes here. We do have a couple dried mangoes here. We'll go ahead and put those in also. Toss these into our brew bag. So now we get mangoes as well as mango juice. And let's go ahead, we're gonna mix this up first. All right, and as we finish our mixing, and notice I'm also using, I'm just using a spatula that has a slotted spatula. That way there we wanna get as much, again, aerated as much as possible, get as much in there as possible, as much air in there as possible. And we're gonna fill this up. Take our handy dandy hydrometer, drop it right in, give it a spin, and oh, this is good. We are at 1.146. We're going to write that down in our notebook as well. Add that back in. So, I like to do things a little bit differently. As you recall, we said three ingredients. Mangoes, which I've got mango nectar, and mango pieces. Peppers, which I've got in here, the jalapeno peppers, seeds and all. And then we said corn. I'm gonna do things a little bit different. I'm gonna be using processed corn. Let me rephrase that. I'm gonna be using cooked corn. Let me rephrase that again. <laughs> I'm going to be using caramel popcorn. I think this will taste great. So we'll go ahead and just open this up. That's going to be good. I'll put it in our bag here. So obviously the caramel is going to add additional sugars. The corn add a little bit of nutrients. The mango adds nutrients. You get your vitamin C and some other vitamins from it. Same thing with uh, jalapenos. That adds a fair amount of nutrients as well. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and seal this up. Before we actually put that in, we're going to go ahead and pitch our yeast. In about 15 minutes that it's been hydrating, so we'll go ahead and pour that in. We're going to add our uh, dimonium phosphate. I need a measuring spoon. Be right back. Now that we have our measuring spoon, go ahead and add in Our dimonium phosphate, also known as DAP. This is just extra nutrients for it. There we go. I'm going to give that all a stir. I'm going to go ahead and add in our bag of goodies here. And I am actually going to take this string, leave it over the edge. I'm going to use this here. We're going to punch this down inside. Let it fill up here. 
we'll just have the string over the edge here. If we put the lid on this way here, if it sinks down to the bottom, I don't have to be fishing around to get it. Go ahead and put our lid on. Now, as per the video about the five tips, I'm going to go put this into my spare bathroom, into the uh, bathtub in there. That way there, if it should happen to push the lid off, make a mess, whatever, uh, it's not going to make a big deal. I'm going to grab my wet erase marker. I'm going to write on the side here uh, what's in here as well as on the top. A lot of times on the top, it will, if this overflows, it'll get erased from up here. But by putting it on the side, I'll make sure that I know what's going, what this bucket is because I have other buckets already going. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get this um, downstairs now and we'll check in on it in a couple days. We're going to keep uh, agitating it so that it will keep that air flowing as well. When it's in primary fermentation, that yeast needs the oxygen. So we're going to make sure that it keeps getting that oxygen and that uh, we've got a good fermentation going. So we'll see you in the next step. Okay, so we are 10 days in. We're going to go ahead and pop this off. Take my clips off here. Uh, we're going to take our bag out that we put in and we're going to take a reading. See how it's going so far. And we're going to close it back up and let it keep going. All right there. Go back here out. We did end up putting the uh, string in with the bucket probably a couple hours after we first started it remember at first we we're gonna leave it out there we go and our initial reading was 1.146 let's see where we are at this point there's a lot of stuff inside of here reading here. We are now at 1.082. We're going to write that down in our notebook here as well. And we're using our Williamsburg, Williamsburg winery glass. They're out in, um, oh, that's thick. <laughs> I don't know if I want to actually try this yet. <laughs> and since everything's sanitized, we can pour that back in here. Williamsburg Winery is in Williamsburg, Virginia, where we actually went on our honeymoon a long time ago. So now, Definitely smell the uh, the jalapeno pepper in there. So it's been in there about 10 days now. Smell a little bit of the caramel. And the caramel popcorn, the secret recipe. And definitely the mango. It's actually not too bad. I mean, it's nowhere near being done, but that is not bad. Let's go put it away and, oh, oh that's, that is, I am really glad I got involved in the Great Mead Project. This is going to be really good. And I think I might have a new top three meads to make. be really interesting once it gets done okay let's keep going we'll see you in the next segment all right now it's been uh, about a month since we started this started back in June 28th it's now July 28th we're gonna take off our binder clips here as you recall we removed the bag previously and now let's go ahead and take our lid off here 
See how everything looks? Hopefully everything looks okay. Put this over here. I'm gonna take a reading here. So our current reading was our handy dandy hydrometer. Bring this down to 1.034035. I'm happy with that. Now let's see how it turned out. So today we're testing from our Pirates of the Caribbean glass from the ride at Magic Kingdom. Okay, and we're going to pour the rest of this into our bottle here. This is where we're going to be putting our secondary in just a minute. Get that over there. So it is still cloudy. It smells good. Definitely tastes the jalapeno in there, the honey, the caramel from the sweetness and the mango. You can definitely pull out all of it from there. Definitely get the jalapeno though in the back. You can taste that in the back. So we're gonna move it over to secondary. We're gonna let it uh, sit and age for a while. See how it turns out. It's definitely unique. Okay. So we're going to get this into our secondary and then we'll see you in another month or so. All right. And now our next step is, as you can tell by the picture, we've got a fair amount of settlement uh, as everything has come down. So more leaves and we're going to rack it off of this, out of this jar. We've got another uh, one right here on our uh, stool right over here. We're gonna rack it into that. We're gonna add in our stabilizer. So we've got uh, potassium metal bisulfite and we've got potassium sorbate stabilizer. We're gonna add these to it, make sure that it's completely done. And then we're gonna go ahead and bottle it uh, after that. Uh, our last reading here was uh, July 28th. It was 1.035. As you recall, our starting gravity was 1.146, so let's go ahead and get this. Uh, we're gonna take another reading, and then we'll go ahead and get it racked over. All right, so this is, this is super clear, as you can see. We'll go ahead and take our handy dandy hydrometer, drop it in, let's, uh, a little bit too much in there. Pour some into our glass here. We're using our K-Wings glass. So in Kalamazoo, we have a hockey team and the hockey team is the K-Wings. They're our local favorite. I'm gonna use that for our tasting. We like to go to their games as often as possible. We're at 1.032, so and this has been sitting for several months now. I'm going to add a little bit more into here for our tasting. Actually pour this into our container over here. Now, you can still smell the uh, pepper in here, the jalapeno, with the aroma of the mango as well. And that has finished out awesome. Definitely in our top picks, I will be making a five gallon batch of this as well. This is great, I am really happy with this. So let's go ahead and get this racked over and then we will add our stabilizers.
I'm gonna do everything I can not to stir up any of the sediment down here, because there's quite a bit. We've got a good inch and a half of sediment down there. All right, this is what we end up with as our product. And so I'm going to add in potassium metal by sulfite. Uh, so it says a quarter tablespoon per six gallon. So I don't need very much of this one. Although I've got a quarter tablespoon here, I don't need to use a full one. So we actually have less than a gallon. That's a chunk of it. All right. And then. a half a teaspoon of potassium sorbate. Okay, half, yep, per gallon. So again, as I don't need quite a full half teaspoon, I don't have quite a full gallon. Unfortunately, I will have more later. So even though I've got some air left in here, there is some, there's a gap of air here. It's not gonna be in here that long. I'm gonna let this sit for 24 hours and then I'm gonna go ahead and rack it into 12 ounce bottles tomorrow. So I'll see you then. All right, and now it is finally time to bottle this. Uh, so in this final step that we have, you will need a siphon, I'm using the auto siphon uh, with a uh, wine tip here. Uh, this is spring loaded so that as I fill up the bottles and I lift it out of the bottle, the spring goes down, closes it off, and I can move from one bottle to another without making a mess. This time here, instead of using wine bottles, I'm actually using uh, 12 ounce beer bottles uh, that we'll be using. And we will be using regular caps and of course mead <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started all right so I've placed the uh, beer bottles here the 12 ounce bottles down on a shelf down here on a stool I right have take that off now the big thing is getting the first one going so I'm actually going to go ahead and take off the very bottom here. So this little plastic, this is the technical term is doohickey, uh, goes on the end of your auto siphon. And that will help prevent sediment from coming up. But since we've already racked it, it's clear there's no sediment at the bottom. I can take this off to make sure that I get uh, every bit of this as I can because I don't have quite a full gallon. This does make it easier if you have another person who can assist. Once you get it going, then you can lower it down. Start using gravity to fill this. All right, we have got 10 bottles that we've been able to fill up. I'll move some of these out of the way real quick. Now we weren't able to get them completely full because again, we didn't have a full gallon. They're pretty close to full. I would have liked to have made them a little bit fuller. So next time I've got to make sure that I add a little bit more in accounting for the sediment that's going to be taken. So we've seen how to use the uh, the corker, the floor corker, for when using wine bottles, using beer bottles with these caps here, put your cap on. This is the other thing I forgot to mention. You will need one of these uh, for a capper. And you're just going to put this on. Comes down, it grabs the sides of the bottle it goes out of the way and you're going to just going to squeeze it down and it's done we're going to get these uh, finished up and we're going to send them off to our friends 
and hopefully they enjoy it as much as I have so far. There we have it, 10 bottles ready to go. We can get those off in the mail uh, tomorrow. Uh, get them sent over to our brewing friends. Uh, hopefully, hey guys, I hope that you all enjoy these. Uh, and I've really enjoyed making it. I've enjoyed the project. For everybody who's still watching at this point here, I know it's been a long video. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it. Uh, please make sure to check out the other brewers who are also making their versions of the Great Mead Project. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. I've made some great friends. Uh, gotten to work with some great brewers out there, uh, people that I've been learning from uh, for over the years. So check their content out. Make sure to subscribe to them. And until next time, hey, thanks for coming out and hanging with Hodge. I'll have a couple other videos over here. If you're interested, uh, go ahead and click on those. Uh, the one over here is going to be my most recent one. And the one up here will be the one that YouTube thinks is best fit. <laughs> we'll have a subscribe button over here uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel. Uh, but until next time, thanks again. I'm hanging with Hodge. We'll see you next time. Cheers.